Let's face it, we would all like to make a quick buck, right? There's literally millions of get-rich-quick opportunities available, but some are a tad more scrupulous than others. With the advent of technology, it's now possible to do almost anything. That being said, it's also possible to fool the hell out of almost anyone. Let's take a look at seven of the biggest scams people have fallen for. Starting at number seven, let's take a peek at the $1,000 app. I Am Rich was an application that was sold on the Apple App Store for a whopping $999.99. Although not a true scam, as they say, the devil is in the details. With a $1,000 price tag, you'd assume the app could do some pretty amazing things. But its pretty hefty sticker price was all to simply display a single glowing digital red gem on the user's device. Seriously? That's it. In the developer's defense, they did mention that the app had no hidden function at all. So, unlike some of the other entries on this list, they were forthcoming. The best part is, eight actual people bought the app. In the mere 24 hours, it was actively on sale. Apple quickly pulled it from the store when they got wind. Moving on to more telephonic deviousness, this voting hotline scam comes in at number six. The extremely popular British television shows Britain's Got Talent and I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, were subject to a clever phone scam set up by a Birmingham firm. Subhan Universal Limited purchased and operated 10 telephone numbers that were one digit off from the numbers displayed on screen which would prompt viewers to call and vote on. When connected, a recorded message would simply say, thanks for voting, and hang up, surreptitiously charging the caller one pound and two pence plus the standard network charges. Although it may not seem like much, the sheer frequency of viewer missiles built up quite a fortune as no one caught on for almost an entire month. Eventually, the firm was investigated, fined, and forced to issue refunds to everyone charged. Coming in at number five is the age-old advanced fee scam. The advanced fee scam, or more commonly referred to as the Nigerian prince scam or similar, actually dates back to the 18th century when businessmen would receive contact from a stranger attempting to smuggle someone connected to a wealthy heir out of a Spanish prison. In exchange for some money to help bail them out of prison, a portion of the rescued party's wealth would be shared in appreciation. Of course, it would never come. Morphing throughout time and surviving all forms of communication, from pen and paper, to phone, to facsimile, to email and the internet, it's come a very long way and has never seemed to really stop fooling people. Although it's a broad figure, the United States government reported that Americans lost close to $200 million to just internet fraud in the year 2006 alone. While we're on the subject of advanced fee scams, the lottery scam comes in at number four. Slightly varied from the Nigerian prince deal, the lottery scam similarly involves the victim being contacted by someone claiming to be a part of the government or a representative of the lottery, notifying them of a huge win. After the winner releases their sensitive private information like name, residential address, occupation, bank, account, or anything else they provide, an upfront fee to cover the issuance of a grant check is required, with again, of course, no actual payout. Last appearing in the United States in around 2004, victims were hit with both phone calls, emails, and phony checks sent via regular mail sneakily amassing estimated hundreds of thousands of dollars in fraudulent debits. Getting a little more personal, the money order overpayment swindle is our number three. Usually requiring face-to-face -face contact, this grift begins when a scammer responds to a classified ad or auction listing, offering to purchase and pay for the item using a money order, but it doesn't stop there. A request to send a money order for more than the purchase price is made, with the buyer asking the seller to wire back the difference after it has been deposited. A convincing counterfeit fools the bank at first, but will eventually be stopped and make the sellers liable to reimburse the entire amount, out their item, and the extra money they wired to the grifter, it's a risky move that surprisingly happens all the time. If there's a lesson to be learned, there's just nothing like cold, hard, and real cash. Going back in time a bit, our number two scam revisits the days of the golden rush. Back in the days when gold mining was all the rage, mine owners, and the devious investors saw opportunities in the all-too-eager public to do a little old-timey swindling. By placing a few nuggets of valuable gold 
in an otherwise worthless mine, prospective buyers would often be convinced that the claims of the mine being loaded with gold were true, sinking upwards of millions of dollars into bogus earth worth little more than the price of its soil and rock. Legend has it, some of the dishonest proprietors would even fire shotguns packed full with gold dust into the sides of the mines to further hold up to pre-investment's investigation. Finally, the number one on our list, with a name so notorious it became a term, Ponzi. Charles Ponzi, the notorious 1920s swindler that tricked thousands of New Englanders into a postage stamp speculation scheme, promising investors that he could provide a 50% return and a 100% profit, he used money from his later investors to pay off his formers, making millions but eventually going broke and imprisoned. Ponzi's name continues to represent the fraudulent tactics known as pyramid schemes. Thank you for watching Interesting Top 7s. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button below and subscribe for new videos every week.